If I were to look at the foundational breakthroughs in AI over the past decade, Google has been at the forefront of many of those breakthroughs. Gemini is our largest and most capable model. It means that Gemini can understand the world around us in the way that we do. So not just text, but also code, audio, image, and video. Taylor used Gemini. As far as I know, none of that is unique to Gemini. I mean, I haven't been keeping up with all the models, but I think like, well, those models obviously are multimodal as well, but I don't know about video. Video is interesting. Video. Taylor used Gemini to search a large corpus of scientific papers for key information. We wrote a prompt. With its advanced reasoning capabilities, Gemini was able to distinguish between papers that were relevant to the study and those that weren't. I'm delighted to introduce AlphaCode 2, powered by Gemini. When we evaluate AlphaCode 2 on the same platform as the original AlphaCode, we solve almost twice as many problems. Gemini on its own has the ability to transform software development as we understand it. Based on their design, which of these would go faster? The car on the right would be faster. It is more aerodynamic. But safety and responsibility. I mean, that's impressive, but I do wonder, like, how, like, could we give it examples where it would fail? Because it's really all about the edge cases. Like, if a chat model or, like, an AI can do something really impressive once, but then it messes up the next five times, it's not really impressive. So, because if you can't trust it, then yeah like this is just a like a true or false question like anyone like you could give this question to like 10 little kids and they would guess right half the time so i don't think that's super impressive i mean obviously if it if it can accurately do that it is impressive aerodynamic but safety and responsibility has to be built in from the beginning and that has oriented us to be both bold and responsible together developers and enterprise customers are going to figure out really creative ways to further refine our foundational models gemini will be available in three sizes gemini ultra our most capable and largest model for highly complex tasks gemini pro our best performing model for a broad range of tasks and gemini nano our most efficient model for on-device tasks it's been a monumental engineering task, which has been, you know, very challenging, but also very exciting. As far as I know, Ultra isn't released yet. That is supposed to be the one that's like comparable to GPT-4. Uh, Pro is like GPT-3.5 and that one is released. I think we can even try it out. It should be able to do a hard question from a long time ago. So this is an old leak code question. I think it'll probably be able to solve it. So yeah, so so far not good. It's not very good. And it got the first example wrong. So yeah, this is a really, really hard problem too. So okay, so it's not very good is my conclusion. But l let's watch a Fireship video because these are pretty informative and we'll get a lot of memes. And then when we actually want to learn about the Gemini, we can find some like real videos. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love Fireship. His videos are great. Hey, so. Google got obliterated by Microsoft's Blitzkrieg attack in the great AI war of 2023. GPT-4 captured the zeitgeist of the artificial intelligence age we just entered. And things got so bad for Google that people unironically started using Bing. But That's fake news. Um, I think everybody said people were going to start using Bing. Let's just see the data. Bing usage 2023. Did it change? Did did more people start using Bing? Everybody said th that was going to happen. Didn't happen, right? Didn't happen. So unfortunately, and I'm not even calling Fireship out. It's just a common misconception, isn't it? That people are using Bing now. It's They're really not. So fake news. Bing has failed to gain market share. I don't know why, to be honest. You would, you really would expect people to start using Bing, and it's not the case. It looks like it's less people using Bing, isn't it? So I'm not even being a Google fanboy. I don't own any Google stock anymore. I have no horse in the race. It doesn't matter to me who's doing well or not. But look at this. Bing market share has gone a little bit down. It's pretty much flat. So yeah... Let's continue. Using Bing, but the war is just getting started. And just yesterday, Google unleashed its highly anticipated Gemini model that beats GPT-4 on nearly every benchmark. It is December 7th, 2023, and you're watching The Code Report.
Gemini first became known to the public earlier this year at Google I.O. when Sundar explained it like this. We've been applying AI to make AI rigorously tested AI with AI. Gemini is a multimodal large language model that will replace Lambda and Palm 2. Like GPT-4, it's multimodal, which means it's not only trained on text, but also sound, images, and video. Google's demo is absolutely insane. It can recognize what's going on in a video feed and respond in real time. Unfortunately, and this isn't Fireship's fault because this is Google's marketing that pretty much said this. Unfortunately, I think this is fake news because it can't in real time respond to videos. What I, I saw, and I think people in the comments mentioned this, is that this was actually scripted. They fed the model static images. Uh, through like snapshots of the videos, like individual frames. And using that, it guessed what animal or whatever it was. Yeah, unfortunately, the video feed part was basically fake. The Gemini report, they prompted Gemini with photos and asked more specific questions. Then they stitched it all together for the demo. It's cool, but definitely not the amazing video AI we all thought it was. Not No fault to anyone who thought it was real, though. They purposely missled with their pr uh, presentation. And yeah, so... In the report, the Gemini report, so the researchers and engineers or whatever, they probably clarified in that report, but I guess like the marketing team or somebody at Google was like, no, people are dumb enough to believe it, so just give them some fake news, and then the hype is just going to build up. Like this guy draws a duck, then the AI tells him it's a duck. It is a duck. Like, holy fuck. And it can do that in multiple languages. Yatsu. What's really crazy, though, is that it can keep track of things in an ongoing video feed. Like it plays the game of find the ball under the cup, and even after the cups are scrambled up, it still knows where the ball is. And it can even do connect the dots, which makes my five-year-old obsolete. It also does multimodal outputs, like it can generate images on the fly like stable diffusion, and can even generate music based on a prompt. And not just text to audio, but image to audio. How about some 80s hair metal. It's an anything to anything model. It's also good at logic and spatial reasoning. Using these two pictures, it's able to tell you which car will go faster based on the aerodynamics of the vehicle. In the future, a civil engineer will be able to just take a picture of some land, then the AI can instantly generate some blueprints for a bridge. So software engineers aren't the only type of engineers becoming obsolete. Although I do of course have some more bad news for programmers. So... We generate some blueprints for a bridge. So software engineers aren't the only... Okay, I mean, it's funny and all, but I can never tell how serious Fireship is being with, uh, like, the obsolete AI stuff, because he kind of, like, feeds in to some of the FUD, in my humble opinion, because obviously it's a very meme -y thing, and he does make a lot of jokes, but he says it so much that, like, I am starting to think he does believe it. And who knows? Like, I'm not trying to predict the future, but it's, it's easy to fall into the hype with anything and to make AI out to be better than it is. It's, yeah, and that's kind of what, like, this video is. And that's kind of what the Google marketing was as well. They're just making it out like, oh, it can do everything. It can solve all your problems. Like, the NVIDIA CEO is, uh, I've seen articles where he's obviously like hyping AI. And I saw somebody like pushing back, like he's saying AGI will be here within five years. Whether it will or not, nobody knows. But of course, he's going to say that he's the one selling GPUs, the best GPUs that everybody's using right now. So of course, he's going to say that. And that's, I have no idea. I'm not trying to predict the future. And I'm just saying that like hype is such a powerful thing. Hype is like a force of nature. Like, it's like a hurricane. It's just going to, like, keep going and pushing everything and, like, moving everything in its path. And try not to get too caught up in the hype. That's, like, the only thing I would say. That's what I try to do as well. Because it happens with a lot of things with, like, crypto. Everybody thought crypto was going to be there forever. The only type of engineer is becoming obsolete. Although I do, of course, have some more bad news for programmers. Google also unveiled AlphaCode 2, which performs better than 90% of competitive programmers. So better than 90% of competitive programmers, maybe we'll take a look at a closer look at the report of that. This is just one statistic, but what exactly does that mean? 90% of competitive programmers, which competitive programmers? I mean, most programmers aren't great. 
And are they, these like the good ones? How was it trained? Was it trained on old problems or new problems? Does it already have code force problems as part of its data set? I know we just used Bard. So I, I guess I don't even know. Is alpha code like public to use right now? And we're talking about programmers solving highly complex abstract problems like you might find on code forces competitions. Like any good programmer, alpha code 2 can break down problems into smaller problems using techniques like dynamic programming. Yeah, again, a, a chat GPT can do that, right? If I give it a code problem, it can give me the solution, but it's usually because it's literally seen the problem before. It, I'm really skeptical of this because as we know from, I, I skimmed the report, there's one thing it's not very good at. There's one thing it's very not good at, and that's math. So if it's not good at math, how can it possibly come up with original dynamic programming solutions. How can it possibly do that? If it can barely do five plus five, there are ways to trick it where it can't even do basic arithmetic. I don't know how to like interpret that, that it's better than 90% of competitor programmers. What does that mean? I have no idea. I'm not saying it's awful. I don't think it that means exactly what it says. Somewhere here, there should be math. So this, mathematical reasoning and visual context. I don't know exactly what that means, but look at that. I mean, of all these numbers, all these numbers, 80%, I guess, perception video answering questions. It makes sense that it wouldn't be great at that, and audio as well. But this, this is image-based, I guess. It's not very good at math. It's very poor at math in this first category where it's pretty much good at everything else. Now, all these demos look really amazing at first glance, but is this all just a marketing sleight of hand from Google? Well, currently, Gemini comes in three sizes, tall, grande, and venti. The smallest version is designed to be embedded on devices like Android phones, while the pro version is your more general purpose model, while ultra is like the Magnum XL of the Gemini family and the one that's blowing everybody's minds. If you're in the United States, you can actually use Gemini right now in the Bard chatbot. However, it's using Gemini Pro, the mid-range version. Bard is way better than it was six months ago, and it's still extremely fast but after using it for a few minutes, it's pretty obvious that it's not quite as good as GPT-4 Pro. But GPT-4 is nervous about Gemini Ultra. When I asked about it, it started throwing mad shade at itself, and then before it finished, Sam Altman pulled the plug, giving me this network error. When it comes to benchmarks, Gemini Pro underperforms GPT-4 in most situations, but Gemini Ultra outperforms it on almost every single category. Most notably, it's the first model ever to outperform human experts on massive multitask language understanding, which is typically a multiple choice test over a wide array of subjects, kind of like the SATs, but for AI. What's hella surprising, though, is that Gemini Ultra underperforms GPT-4 on the hella swag benchmark. It's designed to evaluate common sense natural language by having the AI finish a sentence that's often vague and ambiguous. For example, a man watches a fire ship video and afterwards feels blank. It's a job that's really easy for humans to do, and a very important benchmark, because when an AI can't do this well, it doesn't feel very human-like. In GPT-4, I can write a vague prompt filled with typos, and somehow it that's interesting. Okay, I don't, I don't know why I stopped the video just to say that. Sorry. Almost always seems to know what I'm talking about. The fact that GPT-4 is doing so much better on hella swag is hella concerning to say the least. But another interesting thing to know from the technical paper is how they train this beast. They use their newly unveiled version 5 tensor processing units, which are deployed in superpods of 4096 chips. Each superpod has a dedicated optical switch, which allows data to transfer quickly between the pods to train in parallel. Then they can dynamically reconfigure into 3D torus topologies. In other words, they can shape shift into donuts to reduce the latency between ships. And the scale of Gemini Ultra is so large that they had to communicate between multiple data centers. The paper also describes the training data set, which basically includes everything you can find on the internet, including web pages and YouTube videos, as well as scientific papers and books. They filter it for quality, then use reinforcement learning through human feedback to fine tune the quality and avoid hallucinations. Overall, Gemini looks amazing on paper, but prepare to be disappointed. The Nano and Pro models will be available on Google Cloud on December 13th, but the Gemini Ultra Pro Max won't be available until next year until additional safety tests are done and it reaches 100% on the Hello Woke benchmark. This has been the code. It seems like it's marginally better than GPT-4, which is fine, which is good. Um, but I guess my question to you guys is what do you think about the rate of improvement of AI? Because as far as I can tell, in November of last year, so about a year ago, GPT-3 came out, 3.5, like the chatbot. Everybody was super impressed. Like, it kind of came out of nowhere. It was super, super up. Like, if I had to draw, it was kind of like, out of nowhere, GPT just came out here, 2022. And then 
like early, a few months later, GPT-4 came out and it's better than GPT-3. It might even be a lot better, right? But it wasn't like 10 times better. And since then, everybody was like, oh, GPT-5 is going to come out and it's going to be this big again. And then every year we're going to go like that. So uh, people, it seems like people are predicting an exponential improvement in in AI technology. And I don't know about that. I'm not like an expert on CPUs, but isn't it true that CPUs and like transistors or, or semiconductors, there was rapid growth at some point, but it does level off. And that's what I'm wondering. Where is this? Because it's, I don't know, I guess it is possible if we do get AGI and AGI is basically like general intelligence, something that can just continuously learn on its own. I I don't know. Like, it's really hard to know because the smartest people, the people that are the most like knowledgeable about this stuff, they're very biased. People like like the NVIDIA CEO, people like Sam Altman and all those people, they're kind of biased. They want you to think it's coming and it's coming faster. And of course, like OpenAI wants like regulation and all that stuff. So it's really hard to know how fast is this going to grow and or is it just going to level off? Uh, Google's best Gemini demo was faked. This is just one problem, though. The video isn't real. We created the demo by capturing footage in order to test Gemini's capabilities in a wide range of challenges. Then we prompted Gemini using still images from the footage. So they captured a video, but they fed Gemini still images and prompted it via text. So it's not really able to interpret videos, it's images and text. Um, And it's not even like that video was complicated either. It was literally a person drawing. So although it might kind of do the things Google shows in the video, it didn't and maybe couldn't do them live and in the way they implied. In actuality, it was a series of carefully tuned text prompts with still images clearly selected and shortened to misinterpret what the interaction is actually like. You can see some of the actual prompts and responses, which to be fair is linked in the video description. Fireship just uploaded a new video. Oh, the Gemini lie. Okay. I mean, it's good that he's pointing it out. But I I just want to say I was first. I pointed it out first, okay? 